sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And the Apostle John tells us, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Praying together, most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of the land of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and we distest this miserable food. Then the Lord set, sent poisonous snakes among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who was bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which, you, in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, 
following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. 
Those who believe in him are not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord I would like to begin by saying what an honor it is uh, to be here to preach and to celebrate uh, at our cathedral. Uh, and I bring you greetings from my own parish, St. Bartholomew's in Pewaukee, friends. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I have to say that as I was reflecting on the scripture lessons for this morning, uh, I was a little disturbed. I don't know if you were disturbed uh, as well, but when we look at the reading from the book of Numbers, I don't know how you can get past it and not ask, what was the deal with God sending serpents among the people of Israel? Uh, I think it's a bit of a disturbing story on face value. But what I want to suggest to you, beloved, is hang in there. Don't be so caught up in the, those disturbing bits that, that you can't hear uh, the bigger picture and then hear why it is that Jesus, the most loving person to ever walk the earth, cited that story to talk about why his father sent him. Because what we have to remember is that this story, way out of, back out of the book of Numbers, of what's happening there in the, the desert, in the wilderness, among God's people with these serpents, and they're biting them. And then God commands Moses to make a bronze serpent to lift up uh, for them to look at and be saved that our Lord Jesus, the, the most loving person who ever lived, cites this story to make a point for those who were listening 2,000 years ago and for you and I who are listening today. And, and the story starts, I think, with Jesus saying, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. That strange story. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. So that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And I think we just have to stop and ask, okay, so what's going on? We've got to at least answer the question about what was happening there in the desert and the wilderness to move on to the point that Jesus is making. So what do we have going on? Well, we have the Israelites, and they are in the desert. They're being led by Moses. And if you remember the story, they've been liberated from slavery in Egypt. And up until they were freed from slavery in Egypt, the only thing that they had ever known was slavery, was no freedom not having the freedom to make their own choices, not having the freedom to have time off, that they existed solely to work for the Egyptians as slaves. It's what they knew. It's what they expected their children to know. It's what their grandparents knew and their great-grandparents. It's all they'd ever known. And then God miraculously frees them as a nation and as a people from slavery and does an amazing thing because we have to remember they're, they're there in the desert and God is miraculously feeding them daily with bread from heaven 
manna. And he's giving them miraculous food day by day, caring for all of their needs. And I don't know about you, beloved, but if I woke up every morning and found food waiting for me on my lawn, delivered by God himself, I think I would be pretty astounded and amazed. And that's what God is doing for the people of Israel out of love. He's feeding them day in and day out, miraculously, with bread from heaven directly. And when we get to Numbers chapter 21, their response isn't, oh, this is so great, we're finally living as free people. We're not slaves anymore. And we never lack anything because God is miraculously feeding us with bread from heaven every day. That's not what they say. The scriptures tell us that the people spoke against God and against Moses and said, why have you brought us out of Egypt? Essentially, why did you free us from slavery? Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. The f- miserable food that they are detesting is bread God is sending to them directly from heaven. And they're saying, we liked it better when we knew what to expect when we had a little bit more control over our day-to-day lives. Yeah, we were slaves, but at least we had some control over things and we're getting what we thought we wanted. And so the people of Israel, Israel actually say to God that they detest his miraculous care for them as miserable food. And so here's where it gets disturbing. On first listen. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people. Time out. God sent poisonous serpents among the people. Well, this is where just a little bit of diving into the language is helpful, if you'll you'll bear with me. The word sent used in the Hebrew scriptures, it's not really that they were sent... It, it, it kind of carries the implication or the idea that the Lord released serpents. That, that God took a step back. Because what he was actually doing for the 40 years that they were wandering in the wilderness, eating the miraculous food he provided them, was that they were in a place where there were poisonous serpents all the time. Every day for 40 years... And when they were walking with God and willing to be dependent on God and dependent on God's provision and protection, God protected them from the serpents. And this idea that the Lord released them is essentially what they said is, you know what, God? Yeah, you're miraculously taking care of us, but we detest it. And there's a little bit of a parental tone to it, like, we don't need you, Dad. We got this. But what they're doing is they're rejecting God's care. We, we detest the, the provision you're giving us. And God says, well, if you detest my care, then I'll remove my care from you. And when God removes his care, it's not just that the food is going to stop, but the protection stops. And what happens is they start getting bit by the poisonous snakes that have been around them all the time. I hope that information is helpful for you to not hear that God sends poisonous serpents, but then when the Israelites rejected God's loving care, God honored their free will, but it did not go well for them because God wanted to be their father and protect them and provide for them. And so as soon as they come to their senses and repent, God does give them a way to be healed. But what God does is he tells Moses to make a bronze serpent to lift it up They're in the wilderness. And if the people look on it, they'll live. And there's this sense that what God is saying is if you're willing to acknowledge the very thing that is hurting you because you rejected me, you'll find life. 
and, and there's a loving care in that, that, that I don't think it was just their physical bodies that were healed and saved, but that by acknowledging, yes, Lord, we do need you. We do need your loving care. We do need your protection. And we're going to look directly at the result of our rejection of you and come and be honest with it. That they would be saved and be healed. And so that is the story that Jesus references to talk about his mission as the son of God. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to save God's people from their own rejection of him, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And I can't help but think that the idea of Jesus being lifted up on the cross that when we have to look upon him on the cross and what our rejection of God cross God the Father, the life of his own son, and we come to grips with the result and the effect of our own sin, it is an honest moment, maybe even a brutally honest moment, but that what we find is eternal life, healing. And so what I hear the Lord Jesus inviting us to consider here in the Gospel of John is an invitation to eternal life that requires humility. Because when Jesus taught us to pray, he said, when you pray, pray like this. And the first two words are our Father, not the deity not the judge, our Father. And what Jesus is inviting us to consider is that just as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness so that those people would be saved, that Jesus was lifted up so that we could be saved by a Father who loves us who wants us not to reject his care for us, his love for us, but to acknowledge our need for him and our dependence on him. And that, that is by looking up upon Jesus lifted up that we need a savior, that all of us has brokenness and hurts and ways that we have been sinned against ways that we struggle with our own sin, ways in which we keep doing the things we don't want to do, and that Jesus can free us from those things. And so, beloved, I believe that the invitation today from Jesus is to hear that whoever believes in him would have eternal life because God so loved the world, which means God so loved you. Right now, today, in 2021, God loved you so much that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him wouldn't perish, but would have eternal life that, that would freely depend on our loving Father. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are there for us, that your Father, our Father, is there for us as a divine and loving parent. Help us to trust God, to depend on God, that we might know the eternal kind of life that you offer us. And that it's in your good name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Beloved, let us
confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Say it together. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the judge and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, in order to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, 
that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be Dear friends, I'd like to invite you in a spiritual communion, and you can do that with us together right now with the words uh, that we'll pray together. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you, and grant that those who have been nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.